<laughs> so program committee duties and structures. So you'll see, you know, there's going to be a lot of duplication, which is actually really good. That means we're all doing the same things. You know, we also uh, uh, utilize Google Docs. You know, is there an opportunity within Collaborate? Could is you know could Collaborate actually accommodate the same features as uh, you know as Google Docs? Um, from my understanding, most regions the chair elect runs the spring meeting. In Region Two, it's actually not the chair elect. The chair actually nominates someone, and some of the strategy behind that is usually they had they would have more time to actually be a co-chair of the of the uh, of the meeting, learn from the chair, and then actually have almost 12 months to actually uh, complete the meeting. The, um, w as we were discussing as far as, you know, um, how many people are, are going to be, be on your program committee, I think, you know, the previous group actually said that you, sometimes we'll see that we have large program committees. Really, it's usually a nucleus. And I really like the idea from, from, uh, that we just heard about the executive level versus uh, the whole committee coming together. Uh, <clears throat> One thing is, you know, do you have standing standing conference calls, whether or not you, you could attend or not? Is there an agenda being sent out, some of the best practices? You know, uh, as we heard earlier today about minutes. You know, are there minutes being uh, done? Are they being sent out? Are, are they being filed? Are they actually being referenced during, during the, ne the, the uh, next call? Um, Region 1 actually has, you know, personal meetings. Obviously, I'm a big believer you get a lot more done in person than you can on the phone. but. Sometimes yeah, we, we always don't have that luxury. And on the uh, second page. Oh, uh, the timeline. So, you know, are you, uh, some of the best practices we were discussing was a, a uh, actual timeline and who's actually going to be responsible, the chair, the co-chair, maybe someone designated within the committee to make sure that these milestones are actually met and when they are met, you know, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Publicity, um, I'm open to suggestions, suggestions for this one. Uh, right now it's the email blast, you know, friends, family, uh, you know, using this meeting as a uh, pub uh, publicity, but are there opportunities to publicize your spring meeting and what are they? Uh, sponsorship, actually, you actually asked me the question, I thought it was a great question, how do you get sponsors? And, you know, to be honest, I'm going to utilize this meeting to, uh, you know, there's tons of them out there, so we're going to be, uh, you know, asking and pleading and begging, but, you know, what are the best practices? How do you actually get sponsors? You know, that's actually one of the questions I have for myself. Uh, we learned a lot today, obviously, about the uh, food management and the hotel, uh, hotel logistics. Uh, call for sessions, so, does, you know, one thing that we were discussing, you know, do you have a call for sessions? You actually send out that email blast. What is that response rate? Or how do you actually encourage a better response rate? Um, Karen, you want to add anything? Um, can you just read down the role of responsibilities? Sponsorship, oh, uh, fund track activities. So if you're actually creating the tracks, how are you actually designating who's going to be responsible for them? Some was on a volunteer basis. Some regions are actually tasking them out to uh, individuals. There was hotel logistics, hospitality suite, food manager, AV manager, workshop director, uh, budget, and registration. 